is the patient assessment management medical skill. In this skill, you will have 15 minutes to perform your assessment, patient interview, and voice treat all conditions discovered. You should conduct your assessment as you would in the field, including communicating with your simulated patient. You may remove the simulated patient's clothing down to his or her shorts or swimmer if you feel it is necessary. As you progress through this skill, you should state everything you are assessing. Specific clinical information not obtainable by visual or physical inspection, for example, blood pressure, should be obtained from the simulated patient just as you would in the out-of-hospital setting. You may assume you have two partners working with you who are trained to your level of care. They can only perform the interventions you indicate necessary and will acknowledge all interventions you order. I may also supply additional information and ask questions for clarification purposes. Do you have any questions? I do not. Right. You were dispatched to a 55-year-old female having chest pain. Okay. BSI is on. Is the scene safe? Yes. Okay. My nature of illness is going to be a chest pain. I'm going to assess for the number of patients. It's my only patient. Yes, it is. I'm going to immediately call for ALS backup. I'm going to assess for any um, C-spinal normalization. Do I see any signs of trauma? No trauma. Okay. I've considered C-spine, but since there's no sign of trauma, I don't think it's necessary. I'm going to perform a general pressure on the patient. I have a 55-year-old female sitting upright in a chair. I'm going to assess her level of consciousness. As I walk up to the patient, does she look at me? Yes, she does. Great. The patient's alert. I'm going to assess her orientation. Hi, my name's Sean. I'm here to take care of you. Hi. Hi, what's your name? Mary. Mary? Where are we right now? I'm home. You're home? Okay. What day of the week is it? It's Saturday. Saturday? Okay. And why are we here? I'm having really bad chest pain. I don't know about chest pain. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the patient's A and O times 4. 4 to 4 with a GCS of 15. And she stated her chief complaint is chest pain. At this time, I'll assess for any life threats. You have none. No life threats? Yeah. Okay. Um, with assessing with the chief complaint of chest pain, the patient's airway is open since so she's talking to me and talking in full sentences. I'm going to assess her breathing rate, rhythm, and quality. 22 and normal. 22 and normal. Uh, with that information, I'll, I'll give her 100% of oxygen, 15 liters via non breather mask. Is my nose therapy adequate? Yes, it is. Okay. I'll assess the patient's pulse. Mary, is it okay if I check her pulse? Yes. Okay. Again, checking for rate, rhythm, quality. For her, I got 72. Okay, for your for this scenario, it would be 110 and regular? 110 regular. I'll assess the skin color, temperature, and condition. For her, it's pink, normal, and dry. All right, yours is pale, cool, and clammy. Pale, cool, and clammy, signs of shock. So we're already treating for shock with the oxygen. We'll also cover up with a blanket to treat for shock. And then do I see any signs of bleeding? No. Okay. I'm going to deem her a high priority patient because she does, is having active chest pain. I'm going to get down into my um, secondary assessments of this. So my signs and symptoms is going to be the chest pain, substeral chest pain where she's pointing it. Uh, uh, Mary, how long has this been going on for? About 10 minutes now. 10 minutes. Does anything make it better or worse? It just keeps getting worse. It just keeps getting worse? Yeah. Okay. Can you describe that chest pain for me? It's like a pressure. I feel like something's sitting on my chest. Like a pressure? Mm -hmm. Okay. With that chest pain in your chest, does it go anywhere else in your body? It kind of goes down my arm. Goes down your arm too? Yeah, my arm's tingly too. Okay, any other pain besides that? No. Okay, on a scale from zero to 10, zero being no pain and 10 being the worst pain you've felt in your life, how bad is this pain? Seven. About a seven? Yeah. Okay, and over this 10 minutes, is it getting progressively worse? Is it getting better? It's getting worse. It's getting worse, okay. And then prior to us getting here, did you do anything? Did you take anything to make your chest pain any better? No. No, didn't do anything? Uh, no, I came in here and rested, but it didn't help. Okay. Do you have any allergies to anything? Nothing. Nothing at all whatsoever? No foods, no. medication, stuff like that? Nothing. Okay. Are you on any medications? Well, the doctor gave me this aspirin and nitro, but aspirin and I nitro? haven't taken any. You haven't taken any of these yet today? No. Okay. Do you have any past medical history? Two years ago, I had a heart attack. You had a heart attack two years ago? Yeah. Okay. When was the last time you ate something? Breakfast. I had oatmeal. You had oatmeal? Mm -hmm. Okay. And before this chest pain started, what were you doing? I was mowing the lawn. You were mowing the lawn? Yeah. Okay. I just came in to just see if it would get better, but it's not getting any better, better, right? No. Okay. And this time I'll start any secondary assessments. So I'm going to do a cardiovascular assessment on her. So I'm going to assess her blood pressure and pulse. Yes, you're really good. Sure. Okay. Blood pressure is 
She had a little tight, okay? Just keep her nice and relaxed. Okay. Number seven. Your scenario of pressure will be 112 over 80. 112 over 80. Okay. Assess your pulses. That's 72. For your scenario, there will be 110. 110. I'll do a little pulmonary assessment. Baron, I'm sure listen to your lungs, okay? Sure. Mm. Nice deep breath. Deep breath. Deep breath. Deep breath. And one more time. <clears throat> Are we not clear? Lungs are clear. Lungs are clear. <clears throat> I'll do a musculoskeletal assessment to see if the chest pain is musculoskeletal in nature. Again, can you point to where that chest pain is? It's like right here. Right there. Is it okay if I touch it really quick? Yes. Does that cause your pain at all? No, it stays the same. It stays the same, doesn't make it any worse? No. Okay. We'll do an integumentary assessment. I'll assess the skin for color, temperature, and condition again. For her, I'm seeing normal. Still, still pale, cold, and clammy. Still pale, cold, and clammy. We'll also do a GIGU assessment. Um, do you have any nausea or vomiting right now? I feel a little nauseous. You do feel a little yeah, nauseous? A little okay. But no actual vomiting? No. Okay. Any problems going to the bathroom, urination, or bowel movements? No. All that's normal? Mm -hmm. Okay. At this point, I'm going to take a full set of vital signs. So I'll repeat the blood pressure. Nice and relaxed. SpO2 probe on, check a SpO2 set. 98. 98. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm also going to assess her blood sugar. 114. 114. So my field impression of this patient is going to be she's possibly suffering another um, heart attack. Okay. From there, I'm going to call med control, but before I do that, I'm going to check the five rights of the medication. So here I have nitro and aspirin. Um, the dosages for the nitro are 0.4 milligrams and 81 milligram tablets of each aspirin. Uh, they are sublingual tablets of the nitro and these are chewable aspirin. These are prescribed to you? Yes, they are. Okay. Uh, they are not expired. Both of the expiration dates are still within date. And it is the right time to give this because she is having active chest pain. I'll also check if there's any contraindications for the medications. So for the nitro, her systolic blood pressure is above 100, so we're not meeting any contraindications there. Have you taken any um, ED medications, erectile dysfunction medications the past 24 to 48 hours? None of those? Okay, and again, you haven't taken any of these yet? No. Okay. With the aspirin, you're not allergic to aspirin? No. Okay. Have you had any, any GI bleeds, upper or lower GI bleeds? No, no. No, have you had any of those? No. So there's no contraindications of any of the uh, interventions? So I'll call bank control, uh, I'll say my, my unit number. Uh, once the doctor answers, I'll say that I have a 55-year-old female coming from home with a chief complaint of substernal chest pain. The chest pain's been going on for about 10 minutes now. Um, she describes it as a more of a pressure. Um, it's been getting worse over this past 10 minutes. Um, it does radiate to her left arm. Um, she hasn't done anything in the past 10 minutes to make, to make it any better. She has no allergies. She's on aspirin and nitro. They're both in date five rights are intact. Uh, she does have a past medical history of an MI two years ago. 
she last ate um, breakfast with oatmeal, and before doing this, she was mowing her lawn. Her vital signs, her blood pressure is 110 over 80. Uh, her pulse is about 110. Her respiratory rate is 22. She's on 15 liters of high flow oxygen. Her skin's pale, cold, and diaphoretic. Um, her SpO2 is 98% with a blood sugar of 114. I'm calling for medical med control of giving uh, up to three doses of 0.4 milligrams of some lingual tablets of nitro, and also 324 milligrams of aspirin. Again, there's no contraindications. Solid blood pressure is above 100. Uh, she has taken any, any medications. She's not allergic to either of these medications, and with the aspirin, she has no history of any GI bleeds. Let me give those medications. Okay, so I'm gonna first start with the uh, 324 milligrams of aspirin, seeing how they're chewable tablets. So I'll put out four of these tablets. <clears throat> Mary, is it okay if you just put these in your mouth chewing like you normally do? Sure. Okay, so we can consider these administered. Mm -hmm. Once those are, she's chewed those up and eaten those, I'm gonna take a, zero, a single 0 0.4 milligram tablet of nitro. And Mary, I'm just going to have you just put this under your tongue and let it dissolve, right? Don't chew it, don't swallow it. Okay. Okay? After I do that, I'll mark the time that I gave these medications. Um, I'm going to reassess this patient every five minutes, especially after giving the medications. Um, and then after a reassessment, and either when the paramedic gets there or when I arrive at the hospital for the nurse or doctor, I'll give a full report of what I have and what I've done. And I've completed this station.